Chapter 113 to 119. You'll see. A harem as is traditionally and historically understood, was when a man of great importance, status, power, success in life, money and dominant male characteristics, they whether kings, conquerors, intellectuals, successful businessmen. They had at their disposal a large number of women, since there was the belief that due to their success, they deserved more women to reproduce and spread their genes more than another man. It was something that only successful alpha males had as proof of their status, it showed that they could support so many women and that that women's wanted a strong, intelligent and dominant man as a husband, or they were simply forced, since he was someone who stood out from the rest. However, an anime or manga harem. Good. You understand what I mean, right? Broly asked, pulling the gun from Rito's traumatized face and making non-verbal cues that he could answer. Non-verbal signals that became increasingly more and more insistent and threatening. And Rito, due to his past experiences, didn't know whether to answer or not, since he was afraid that whatever he did would end in more blows and insults. I, don't know. Rito said shaky with a trembling voice and tears in his eyes due to the fear caused by the situation and the possible response of Broly. Of course you don't know. You are a fucking idiot. How can you know? But don't worry, luckily for you I am a very patient and quiet guy, in one way or another I will make you understand, Broly said in a very gloomy way, terrifying Rito even more. A Rito that was about to piss on himself while Broly made him turn on himself as if he were a spinning top, as if he were a toy in his telekinetic hands. I knew it. No matter what I say or do. Rito thought doing his best not to vomit due to the dizziness caused by turning so many times and so fast on himself. The harems were designated by the man who wanted to have the harem either to seduce that woman, buy her or force her to be part of that harem. However, in the manga and anime harem, women are the ones who choose the harem master on their own accord, whether that boy wants it or not a lot of times. Is it very convenient? Right? It's not your fault that there are so many women interested in you. Right? It is not as if you were forcing them, and therefore there is no feeling of guilt or evil. Right? And that neither you nor they recognize having or being part of a harem is great. Right? That removes the responsibility and guilt of having several women at your disposal. Right? Therefore, you have no obligation to keep them and their children, endure their emotional bullshit and other annoyances. Right? With this we have all the good of having a harem without the bad of having a harem. Right? 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 shouted Broly increasing the volume of his voice in each sentence due to the great rage at the same time as he was getting closer and closer to Rito's face, to the point that both eyes were less than two centimeters away. An anger so great that he unconsciously made him transform into true legendary Super Saiyan God. Eh -ah. Rito shouted with all his strength upon see that the terribly, powerful and crazy psycho alien approached him more and more in a very threatening way as he transformed, further increasing his musculature. And Broly moving away a little from Rito, trying to control himself so as not to kill him, so he spoke again in a more civilized way, but without much success. F you you see k k k k k k k k k k k You drive me crazy. Let's keep going. Could you tell me exactly what is the reason why Lala, Momo, Nana, Haruna, Run, Kotegawa, Yami, and even Kyoko and Rin are in love with you? Really? Could you tell me why you are a pussy magnet? Could you tell me why? And when he heard that informative bomb, Rito forgot about the terrifying and nothing promising situation he was in and dared to say, what? Does Haruna really like me? Kotegawa and Yami too. Kyoko and Rin. Since when? That is impose. Shut up fucking herpes. Broly shouted as he grabbed Rito's tongue with telekinesis and stretched it out of his mouth to make him shut up in a very forced way. The next time you interrupt me, don't answer what I'm asking, answer or you do anything. I plan to extend this stupid tongue until it reaches your fucking ass. And I will make you lick it to make you understand that you are a fucking piece of shit. Do you understand? If you understand me cry like a fucking wuss. Hum. Buesh, shh, and Rito cried like a wuss, but not because of Broly's order, it was because of the ultra-weak slap of Broly, from Broly's point of view, that hit him on the whole face, almost breaking one or two teeth. IT is normal that you have no idea. Because you are one of the most dense guys of the fiction and because there are no reasons. Or at least logical reasons to fall in love with you. Broly shouted furiously, to then use a mocking and ridiculous voice while simultaneously mockingly and ridiculously represented what he said. 
You touched my tits, so you become my husband and since you tried to save me from some bad guys in a pathetic way, as the 99.9% .9 of the men on this planet would do. I fall in love with you madly. I have seen you take care of some crappy flowers and that makes me see that you are kind and the love of my life. It turns out that he was not someone evil and has bought me food, from now on this will be my favorite food, I will stay close to him, I will become his sister's best friend and I will have a thunder attitude towards him although I want him. Oh. How cutie, he blushes and put a very stupid face when he's embarrassed. That's why I'll harass you sexually every day. Oh my, we kissed by accident. Let's fuck. These are shitty reasons. It is illogical that only with this random shit could exist this degree of infatuation during so much time. And it is more illogical when everyone is in love with the same shitty boy. Overall when they are all pretty, active, independent, smart and even famous. Shouted Broly a few inches from Rito's face, using an inhuman voice power. Ugh. And that caused Rito's face to slightly deform by the power of his voice, a deformation similar to the one suffered by a person accelerating on a powerful roller coaster. And you know what is the most fun of all? Is that you, didn't do or do anything. And when I say that you don't do anything. I don't just mean that you don't make any effort to make them fall in love, correspond them, improve the relationship, or just do something that can make us understand why you're so loved. When I say you don't do anything it's because you don't do anything at all. You only react to what others do, fucking beta faggot. It is assumed that you are the protagonist of this manga and still you don't thing, the girls are the ones that moves the stupid and absurd story of this manga. You are not the protagonist. You are only the character on which the history rotates. And you are a pathetic character. Shout Broly with great indignation, grabbing Rito by the shirt as if he were a gangster trying to intimidate and granny with Alzheimer's to steal her money. I don't know what he's talking about or what he did to him. But please God, make this end, in any way, Rito thought that he was completely terrified, so much that he even began to consider exits with no return. Well yes, you do something. Fall in such impossible and stupid ways that not even the actors of teleshopping spots would be able to imitate. Falling on the girls to create scenes near the hentai genre in an absurdly, repetitive and surreal way in each chapter. To make the teenagers kill themselves by masturbation. You understand me, play a game of five against one and the one who loses spits, do justice with your own hand, play the double bass with love, try to get Excalibur out of its stone without success, make the one-eyed Cyclops cry. This is the fucking only and whole purpose of a manga slash anime harem. They are a fucking shit without any literary value. They are nothing more than self-inserting fantasies in which no popular men who have not passed the hormonal phase imagine that they are capable of having a harem and they are the object of desire of all the beautiful girls. And you know why precisely you have a harem? Because if a stupid loser like you has a fucking harem. Why they can't have one, since they are the equal or less pathetic than you. It's nothing more than a stupid story to satisfy beta males to make them fantasize that are alpha males surrounded by tits that have been gathered without effort or any sense in a shitty history where his great and only claim is see tits and butts and believe that it is you the one who rubs erotically against them. This is the essence of a manga like yours. And it is for this and much more that. I hate the manga slash anime harem. But above all. They're protagonists. And I know that I am repeating myself. But I hate them too much. Shouted Broly, throwing Rito to the ground with violence, as if he were not a person, only an unpleasant thing he was holding by mistake. Eh. A-U-H. Rito shouted when he fell to the ground on his head, which made him bleed from his nose, but fear made him not complain about anything more than that, since it seemed that this monster looked at him with more fury than before. I will not be so short-sighted to complain about that they don't take advantage of the hundreds of opportunities that magically presents itself, to do what any man with a penis between his legs would do in a similar situation. I understand that there are certain scenes that cannot or could be put in a shonen magazine and less in an anime taking into account how prickly paired the Japanese society is in general. I also understand that may be difficult for you to take some hints. Who has not missed the opportunity to fuck for not understanding the mystical signs of a woman? I can even buy the fact that you are madly in love with a single girl and don't want to put your hands on another. And that you are ridiculously embarrassing. I can understand. I can understand that you are a princesso. Although it irritates me too much. Because it is surrealist. Shouted Broly releasing even more energy than before, looking at Rito in a more terrifying way than before, his eyes were bloodshot and it seemed he was going to kill him at any moment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Whatever I have done or not done I am sorry. 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 Rito was a few seconds after suffering a major nervous breakdown and drowning with his own vomit. Ahem. What really drives me crazy is your indecision and lack of initiative. If you are only interested in a girl. If you don't want to be sexually harassed as Momo does. Or if you want to fuck them all or only part of them. Say it. Stake your claim. Stop consenting everything that happens around you if you don't like it. Get rid of this fucking indecision. Whatever you decide may end with someone sad or injured and other happy. But if you continue to fear the conflict, everything will go wrong for you and surely for the majority around you. So. Think about yourself and not others and their fucking shitty feelings. Act. Begin to act as a fucking man, make decisions and take responsibility for them. Shouted Broly grabbing Rito, who was kneeling on the floor, shaking him repeatedly as if he were a cocktail shaker. Eh. Oh. Eh. 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 Rito stammered, who couldn't think of how scared and desperate he was, since the jolts were liquefying his brain. And when Broly saw that Rito was a few shakes from suffering permanent brain damage he threw him to the ground once more. He sat on the bed, incredibly angry, exhausted and disappointed, watching Rito with disgust. It's incredible, incredibly poorly written that so many women without mental defects can be interested in a man so cowardly, so unmanly, so pathetic, so mediocre or null in absolutely everything, so incapable of anything, so clumsy, so... Eh. You lack all the important characteristics that make women feel attracted to a man. I can still understand that your successor in the Shonen Jump, Kagarashi of Yuragi so no Yunisan attracts women who know him. Since he is a strong man, very strong for his universe, capable, reliable and constantly acts demonstrating that he is more or less an alpha male, although in the same way he is almost always involved in the conflicts of the girls and is incapable of making a decision regarding his love life. Kasuma, I miss you. But you. God. Every time I see your fucking useless face I want to crush it to not have to see it anymore. Shouted Broly, crushing like a can of cola the gun with which he had threatened Rito until a few seconds ago, reducing it to the size of a pea with the pressure of his hand. Eh. He will kill me. He will kill me. He will really kill me. Rito thought, crying in fear like never before and trying to run for his life, but his legs and his whole body in general didn't respond, he was so scared th couldn't move. But I won't, at least not now. I'll give you a chance to save your miserable and execrable existence, Broly said trying to reassure himself. Re, really? Rito asked, who seemed to have seen a pleasant light behind a very dark, grim and dangerous tunnel. But Broly interrupted that little illusion with an innocent appreciation, who has told you that you have the right to use your pathetic beta male voice in my fucking presence. If I wanted to hear you talk I would put my arm inside you ass, I would have breakthrough until reach your mouth form the inside and made you talk like a puppet. Maybe. And only maybe in this way you could say something that wouldn't make me with replace your head with a manure bag. Appreciation that made Rito put himself in a fetal position as if he were a baby. He was so desperate and catatonic that was only seconds away from saying, I want to go with my mom. Then Broly approached him, grabbed him by the collar of his shirt and put him facing the door and pointed at her with the finger saying, right now you will go to see each of the girls who are attracted to you and you'll tell them what you really think and want, and you will do what you really think and do what you really want. I don't care if you decide to just stay with Haruna. I don't care if you decide to stay only with Lala. I don't care if you stay with both. I don't care if you risk and decide that you want to keep both. I don't care if you choose another or another's. I don't care if you accept Momo's harem plan. I don't care if you decide that you are not interested or ready for now to start a relationship since you want to enjoy your youth and singleness. I don't care if you fuck your little sister in the bathroom. I don't care if you fuck them all, leave them pregnant, then you omit all responsibility and you run away to Cuba. I don't care if you announce to the world that you are homosexual, since nobody would suppress it at this point. I don't care what you decide, but decide. Fucking eunuch without cojones. Hearing Broly's words, Rito was glad that there was a salvation for him, but on the other hand the conditions that Broly had put completely broke all his beliefs and way of being, so much that even in a situation like this he had great doubts about whether he should do what Broly was saying. Or what to do. And when he saw that indecision, Broly became even more angry, 
so much so that he almost achieved the transformation beyond the legendary Super Saiyan God full power, so he had to be even more drastic than before, I swear. If you don't do something fast, I'll tear that insignificant thing between your legs that you call penis, I will cook it using you as if you were a pan, and I'll make you swallow it from your fucking nose. Then when you poop it I will cool it with the blood that I will extract from your empty scrotum, I'll make you swallow it again, but this time from your ear and then I will destroy your fucking thick intestine before your ex little useless penis before it can become shit again. And you know what will be the funniest thing? Nobody will miss it. So. You can already go to the room of Lala and fuck her up nine times or I will think worse things to do to you. And I warn you, I have a lot of imagination. One moment, but you said you didn't care about what I chose. Rito said with confusion, as there was a great contradiction in Broly's orders slash threats. But Broly interrupted him in a very violent, and irrational way, I know what I said. Come out of my view and don't tell anybody about what has happened here or I'll destroy this fucking solar system. It's not the first time that I do something like this. I am fucking crazy. And with a kick in the ass Broly took him out of the room, and Rito seeing that all that was serious and that Broly was making threatening gestures that suggested that he would kill him and cut his penis in indescribable ways. Rito ran for his life to Lala's room, church, screaming to Lala's room, where the beautiful, kind princess of Devi Luke slept peacefully, there was a noise from outside the room. Tom. 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 Plom. Lala. Lala. Rito shouted, who opened the door loudly, as if it were an emergency, and his face also showed that he was completely in a hurry and even terrified. Right? What happens to you? Have you had a nightmare? Can I help you? Lala said worrying about Rito's face, without bothering her that he woke her up so abruptly at this hour. There is no time for explanations Lala. I'm sorry. Rito said, pouncing at her. The tragic situation he experienced thanks to Broly, his threat and the fact that he had been in a near-death situation made him forget all rationality, and his reproductive instinct finally was activated. Rito. Ah, uh, what are you doing? Mmm, -hmm. are these tickles? No they are not. Oh. Lala said with some innocence and excitement as she watched how Rito acted in a not very normal way, touch girl in a very intense and heretical way, without even having fallen by mistake on top of her. Right's room. Broly was still sitting there inspecting that Rito was doing what he had been ordered. Oh. Rito. M. I have never felt something like this. M. I love you. And seeing that everything had gone as he had planned, he said with satisfaction. Everything is coming up Millhouse. Although it might be a little hard with that boy. Because of this, he will have nighttime terror for two years, post-traumatic stress for a one year, he will develop an irreversible phobia towards muscular men, and he will piss and shit in stressful situations for a few months. But he will thank me in the future. Well. Collateral damage. Next destination. He he he. I will enjoy this. Desire Realm. Broly returned with great humor to the main meeting room located in the center of his spaceship in his Desire Realm, which had become the meeting place for many of the most sociable characters like Abito, Rin, Mantamun, Hagoromo, Najimi, Kamagawa, Goodbyu, Jiro, Ichiryu and others. And of course, he had to give one of his little speeches, well guys. A world less to save, it has been tough, but thanks to my good manners, impeccable mood and but he was quickly interrupted by Rin, last time you left the Brawlivision in this room, we have seen it all you did to that boy, she said with total inexpressiveness, as if he had just seen a fairly grotesque and traumatic movie, like the human centipede. And most of the people who had a little humanity also looked at Broly in a similar way. And you will live with the doubt of knowing if I left that television on purpose so that you will know that I have a bad side. Or that I'm not perfect and I forgot something as simple as removing my Brawlivision. But I know everything that happens in my dimensions so. I'm going to the next world, look at it if you want," Broly said laughing at the situation as he prepared to cross the barriers of reality to traumatize another teenager and his friends, let's play a game. After the spiritual journey in time where they saw the past lives of Yugi, Pharaoh Adam, Sido Kaiba, the priest Sido, where they managed to defeat the bandit king Bakura and Zork, an apocalyptic demonic monster that had a penis dragon, yes, seriously, you can check it, and it was broadcast during kids viewing time, and thereby saved the world. They managed to gather the seven millennium items to open the door to the last duel of this part of the story. Perhaps the most epic duel for its meaning. The duel between Yugi and his alter ego. 
Pharaoh Adam. The duel to free the spirit of Adam. Yugi put the Millennium Puzzle on the Millennium Chart and Fuyumamum. The Osiris eye sculpted on the wall in front of him shone brightly, illuminating the entire abandoned Egyptian temple room. K. Two Yugis. Joey said in amazement when he saw that his lifelong friend had multiplied, but being one of them taller and cooler, but with the same hairstyle impossible to emulate. No, the other is the pharaoh, said Sugoroku, Yugi's grandfather, pointing out what was evident. It can't be. Makuba shouted, that at this point he still didn't believe in magic, despite having been sealed in a card and having seen absolutely everything. Adam. T sighed in an unnecessary way, as the almost irrelevant characters always do, just sign a name. Then Yugi and Adam looked at each other seriously without saying a word, they turned their backs and then they separated from each other, as if this were the far west. This way they were going to have their final duel. The tension and expectation were enormous. A fight between two souls living in one body. A fight between two great friends. A fight that meant the final goodbye to someone who was almost the protagonist of the series. The time to see who really is the king of the games. But. But before. You will have to fight with me. Shouted Broly who appeared in the middle of the two yugis with great arrogance and epicity, wearing a gold dueling device embedded with jewels and wearing the Jack Atlas suit for very large and muscular men. No one expected something like this to happen. And of course they were impressed, fearful and worried about this strange appearance. Who, who the hell is that guy, has three eyes, tail, and one of his arms of is bigger than my trunk. And, he's dressed in a very strange way, but cool at the same time, Joey said pointing out the obvious at the same time that he praised Broly's incredible appearance, asking Ishizu especially, who is supposed to be the expert on spirits and strange things. I don't know. I've never seen or heard of someone, or something like that. This, shouldn't be passed. Ishizu said that she was the most impressed and scared of all, that being who had just appeared before her was totally unknown, and at the same time her sixth sense told her that he was the most dangerous and powerful being she had ever seen. And both Yugi and Adam had the same feeling, that three-eyed being was someone who should be feared more than anyone. Does this mean that this man has nothing to do with spirits or ancient Egypt? T asked, highlighting the obvious once again. And when he heard that this man, despite being very strange, was not related to Egyptian magic and other paranormal things. Sido Kaiba, with his usual rich guy arrogance approached Broly in an intimidating way to get him out of, hey you. I don't know who you are, but if. Hum. But he could not finish his sentence since he was propelled backwards, as if he had been hit by an invisible truck, being completely knocked out and with a finger mark on his forehead. Here I am the only tough guy, asshole, Broly said wiping his finger with which he hit Kaiba's forehead at an absurd speed. Kaiba. They all shouted upon saw that Kaiba had been attacked in an unnoticeable way. Brother, shouted Makuba, who went to help his brother. After seeing that show of strange powers, they could only speak and negotiate. Who are you and what do you want? Adam asked, asking a very obvious question in a situation like this. A good question. I am great and unmatched. True legendary Super Scion Broly. And I have come to this reality to face you in a legendary duel. A duel that will make me the undisputable. King of games. Broly said doing incredibly exaggerated poses, as is usually done in Yu-Gi-Oh in dramatic and important moments. A duel? What kind of duel? Yugi asked, since he wanted to understand the rules to which he would be subjected, since it could be a duel that implied some kind of strange dark magic that could kill them or something. It will be a duel, two versus one, without magic or strange things. I just want to play and have fun. And to give you an advantage. I will let you both play at the same time, but with separate points and I will always be the last to play. I lose a turn, but if I did not, I'm afraid it would end all too quickly, Broly said with a big smile of arrogance one that really bothered everyone. And if by chance we lost, what would happen? Yugi said in a mocking voice, as if he really believed that it is impossible for them to lose. Nothing, you will simply have to live knowing that you are the second, and announce it to everyone in a similar way when someone asks you. Plus hi, who are you? I'm Yugi Muto, the second best duelist in the world. Plus who is the first then? Of course it is the perfect incredible unmatched attractive and powerful god Broly, said Broly interpreting an hypothetic conversation in a very exaggerated and ridiculous way imitating Yugi and a nerd character X. This guy is an unbearable scoundrel, 
They all thought at the same time upon see how bastard and quirky this guy was, but on the other hand he did not seem as evil as other rare guys who appeared of now ear demanding duels. Well, if it's just that, I guess we can leave our duel for later. We had always fought combined but not together. Right Adam? Yugi said to Adam showing off the typical anime cliché friendship plus. And before Adam could answer with another cliché sentence. Stop these annoying cloying conversations written by a menopausal teenager addicted to Prozac. It's time for the duel. And when he shouted, duel. Broly by the emotion was transformed into true legendary super scion full power, posing with a Jojo pose and destroying all the clothes of Jack Atlas that he was wearing, leaving with the torso fully discovered, showing his rocky muscles, fur and divine aura. What the hell? They shouted at the same time when they saw this paranormal, intimidating, impressive, absurd act, and masculine too. And while everyone argued about this act, as irregular as unnecessary, and about Broly's change of appearance. Yugi and Adam focused on the duel, thus beginning their turn. Adam 4000 LFP. Yugi 4000 LFP. Broly 4000 LFP. Tun 1. And with this the duel began, being Adam the first to play, discarding a card I can special summon the tricky with 2000 ATK and put a set magic slash trap card and I end my turn. Turn 2. I use the magic card shielding sword of light. With that you will be unable to attack within 3 rounds. And now I summon green gadget in attack mode, 1400, and I add red gadget to my hand. Finally I set a trap slash magic card and I finish my turn, said Yugi, who used a new deck so that Adam wouldn't know his strategy. Have you seen this? Before he can start his turn he is unable to attack and they have several hidden cards and two powerful monsters. It is impossible for them to lose, Joey said to create expectation and endorse the actions of the protagonists. That's right, I don't think anyone is capable of beating Yugi and Adam together, Tristan said, supporting Joey's argument, unnecessarily as well. Yeah, yeah, stop eating your dicks between yourselves. It's my turn now. Broly told the public while he draw a card. Turn 3. He he he. Since there is no monster in my field I can summon my favorite card in the monster duel. Broly. Level 8 light warrior effect monster. ATK 3000. Death 3000 inch shouted Broly in an excessively effusive way while he summoned his beautiful and powerful creature. What the hell? The audience shouted upon see that the monster Broly had summoned, was Broly, or at least it was exactly like him before he transformed himself in such an unnecessary way. Eh. That's impossible. It can't be that there is a card of himself. And less with an attack and defense so high and easy to summon. And one with unknown effect. Yugi's grandfather shouted when he saw the great injustice that was being committed against his grandson, and also against the dueling monster. This is cheat. Surely he created it himself and hacked the device to allow him to play it or maybe he bribed Pegasus or threatened to include this card in the rules, shouted Joey, who was not entirely misguided. However, Broly was there to clarify the doubts of the public and rivals in the most logical and reasonable way possible. Or maybe not. This is defamation and slander. The legendary and ancient card of Broly have been in the dueling monster since the beginning, even before ancient Egypt. So if you don't present any solid proof that I am cheating or something similar, I will be forced to take legal action against you. It will be better for you to hire a good lawyer. Broly said to silence to the more than logical and deserved criticisms. Desire Realm. Main Meeting Room. Abito, Rin, Kamagawa, Najimi, and Mantamune played cards in the big table, since they were one of the few without a fixed job, while watching the Brawlivision, television created by Broly where Broly's incredible and thrilling adventures are projected, and as in the world of Yugi, they also criticized their boss. WTF? Is this guy so self-centered and narcissistic that he has created an overpowered deck of himself? Abito said with stupefaction, not believing what his developed and magical eyes saw. And he also is so, shameless, said Rin, who saw with indignation the answer he was giving to Joey and the others about his blatant trap. Worst of all, he has spent the opportunity to go to a useful world, but he has used it to do this stupidity, said Najimi, who found that what he was doing was unimportant compared to what he should be doing. Meanwhile, Mantamune replied, giving one of the most reasonable and inspiring speeches that have ever been seen in a fanfiction. Ha 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 ha. Well, I find it very funny, Kamagawa replied, who seemed to be the only one enjoying this moment without feeling ashamed of Broly being his boss. Back to the duel. It doesn't matter, if the dueling device recognizes this card, I'm afraid we can't do anything about it. 
Continue, said Adam, who despite finding that the situation was quite suspicious did not want to extend the wait. To which Broly gladly accepted, thank you Yami Yugi. First of all I will get rid of those annoying swords of light. Since Broly is in the field I use the magic card, Broly's Blown. This card allows me to destroy all the face-up magic slash trap cards of the enemies and prevents my enemies from using cards with the same name throughout the duel. Oh no, without the shielding sword of light Broly you can attack, said Bakura, the good one, highlighting the obvious as his friends slash enemies always do. And now Broly attack his tricky with your eye beam, Broly said, causing Broly to attack Adam's monster. Boom. Oh no. Some yelled. And since my Broly has three eyes he can attack three times. Broly said with a malevolent and terrifying face. Hey, It can't be. Yugi and Adam said when they saw such a problematic effect. I attack your green gadget Yugi. Broly said ordering himself to kill a robot. Boom. And now that there are no monsters, your life points are underpowered, so I attack Yugi directly. Broly said pointing to Yugi to eliminate him from the game. Oh no, if he attacks him now Yugi will lose, T said pointing out the obvious once more. However, Yugi gave up, so fast, not so fast. I activate my trap card stronghold the moving fortress. A trap card that is also a monster with 2000 defense points monster that I summon in a defensive position. With this my points are safe. Boom. And although he was a monster, he was also destroyed by being in a defensive position, therefore his points were safe. Adam 3000 LFP. Yugi 2400 LFP. Broly 4000 LFP. I can't believe it, that cheater monster has the advantage in this duel against two Yugis, said Joey, very indignant and dismayed due to the momentary defeat of his friends. But Broly did not care what the public said, since it was still in his turn, and here I could end my turn, but... Wawa wawa. Thanks to having destroyed a monster in battle or inferring damage I can make my Broly evolve, and I have killed three so. I summon. And before Broly could finish his sentence the monster Broly was wrapped in a very bright green light that kept growing in intensity and extent. What the hell is that? Said Yugi and Adam, who felt in their spirit the great danger of that radiates that card, card of which they did not kn. What the hell is that? Said Yugi and Adam, who felt in their spirit the great danger of that card, card of which they didn't know the name. He he he, you call yourself the king of the games and you don't recognize one of the best cards? It is undoubtedly the true legendary super scion broly level 11 light beast warrior effect monster atk 5000 def 5000 inch broly said introducing his new monster true legendary super scion broly which was exactly like him but in his transformation of true legendary super scion and seeing that broly had done something quite immoral what 5000 points of attack and defense it is it is superior egyptian god obelisk the tormentor Tristan shouted when he saw that a random card surpassed so far one of the most powerful monsters in the series. It's true. T said, doing the usual, yes, I complain that she didn't do anything. You can stop complaining or exaggerate on every time anybody do something. We are trying to play. Broly shouted before there was more criticism of his person and letter. And with that comment, quite disproportionate. Since if it were not for those comments from the public, the necessary dramatic climate would not be generated so that the spectators were interested in the duel or understood it. Broly continued with more silence. And as I am a good person and I have felt interrupted. I finish my turn, Broly said being benevolent with his rivals, or maybe arrogant. Turn 4. Adam, let me go first, it was Yugi's turn, and although he lost all his monsters, many life points and Broly had a very powerful card in his field, he hadn't given up. I normal summon, red gadged, and use the magic card, ties of Breathen, anime, so I pay 1000 points to summon two monster of the same type from my hand or deck and I summon three yellow gadged and another Gein gadget. Then I put a set three magic slash trap card and I end my turn. Adam, I leave these monsters to you. Adam 3000 LFP. Yugi 1400 LFP. Broly 4000 LFP. Turn 5. And Adam, who understood Yugi's intentions said, thank you Yugi, I will use the well, if they become necessary. And in saying that his expression changed, since he was about to make a decisive play, maybe I don't have in the field a card with more than 5000 points to beat you, but you have relied too much on his attack, and that will be your downfall. I use the magic card, reverse plot. With this I can select a monster in your field and make him attack you. 
And since you don't have another monster, I attack you directly. And since you don't have set cards, with 5000 attack points you have lost. Bien. The audience shouted at the same time upon see the simple but effective stratagem of Adam. Ha 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 well done other Yugi, you've used his own invented cheat card against him. Joey shouted when he saw that the cheater being from another dimension would be defeated with his own cheat but. Very intelligent move, but my Broly is not affected by magic cards. I forgot to say it. I'm sorry Broly said sarcastically and mockingly when he saw that Yugi's card had been of no use. That? Is it immune to magic cards? Makuba said when he saw that the master move had failed. It's the same as an Egyptian god, Tristan said when he saw how powerful Broly, card, was. Okay, it seemed too convenient that you had left him unprotected, said Adam, who despite being upset about spending that card, knew that there was a possibility of not winning with that, I put a set magic slash trap card and I'll use the monsters that Yugi gave to me for a superior summon. And summon the Egyptian god, Slifer the Sky Dragon. Great. Adam has invoked one of the three strongest cards in the entire dueling monster, T said when she saw that the duel was not lost yet. Yes, but. Broly's attack points are still too high, whether or not in Yugi's have an Egyptian god, it won't be able to beat him, Joey said, commenting Adam's play. But Adam still had a card to play to solve this setback, I launch, Treasure of God, all the player can draw up to 6 cards, and Slifer gains 1000 attack and defense for each card in my hand. Therefore my Slifer the Sky Dragon now has 6000 attack points, 1000 more than your Broly, said Adam, pointing at Broly with confidence. Ajaya. That's my Yugi, well, it's Adam, but you have already understood me, Joey shouted celebrating that Broly, card, was going to be destroyed. Slifer, attack Broly, and destroy him. Adam shouted ordering the attack. Boom. Slifer threw his energy beam at Broly, which should have destroyed him and subtracted 1000 life points, but, UPS, I'm sorry. Did I also forget to mention that my Broly cannot be destroyed in battle and that I am not harmed by battles related to him? Broly said with a very unpleasant and disgusting smile. What? They all shouted when they saw that great injustice, even Yugi and Adam, who felt outraged by the amount of convenient effects Broly, had, had. Hey! Referee! This is cheat! This guy has created an absurdly powerful and invincible card. Joey yelled at an imaginary referee in a rhetorical way. Hey! I haven't created it absurdly powerful and invincible. I restrained myself a lot to make this minimally exciting. Shouted Broly, who really thought that he hadn't created this card in his image and likeness, with a power and effects at his height. Hey! You just confessed that you created this letter. This duel is a farce. Tristan and Joey shouted when they heard Broly's carelessness. I didn't say anything. Broly said whistling in a sneaky and suspicious way, pretending he hadn't said anything, well. It's still your turn Adam. And Adam that like the rest was really upset with Broly's cheat, but he was professional and continued with the duel, mmm okay. I said a magic slash trap. But he was interrupted by Broly, I'm sorry, but thanks to the temporary powers of my Broly, if you don't have monsters with a higher level than Broly in the field you can't make your main phase too. And my Broly is level 11 and yours level 10, so, you can't place cards face down now. Wawa wawa. What do you say? Said Yugi and Adam, who were beginning to feel extremely outraged by Broly's continued surprise effects. Shut up and end your turn, Broly said like a corrupt winner that didn't want to heard complaints. Growling. I finish my turn, said Adam with a squeak. Turn 6. Oh. It's my turn. What a surprise. Mmm, let's see how I'm going to defeat you. Oh yeah. First of all. Broly said with a sinister smile, smile announcing the end. However. Yugi did something, not so fast. I activate the, Divine Peace Treaty, trap card that I had placed. Just a moment. That card was not in his deck in the anime or in the manga. It doesn't even exist. Fucking Yugi crazy cheats. And they call me my cheater. Thought Broly who was witnessing as usual the moment when Yugi altered reality itself to win in an unfair way. If I get rid of the 99% of my life points I can activate this card, which cannot be denied. Yugi exalted, waving his hand in an exaggerated way. Yes, fucking convenient, Broly thought grumbling. And its effect allows that in the next 4 turns they cannot lower anyone's life points, skip the battle phase and deny any attack and shield all cards on the field of the opponent's effects. 
During those turns you cannot do anything against us, Yugi said clarifying the effect of this created card by the convenience of the script at that time, so that Broly could not kill them in his turn of in the following one. Yes, thanks for the explanation, Ah, I should have killed you on my first turn. Broly said almost regretting not finishing things quickly. I forgot to say it, but thanks to the full power ability I can multiply the attack and defense power of my Broly on each turn, so. True Legendary Super Scion Broly. Level 11 Light Beast Warrior Effect Monster. 10.000 Attack. 10.000 Defense. What? 10.000 Points. Yugi and Adam shouted when they saw such huge and insurmountable numbers. Again cheating with his invented card. Joey said with pessimism and fatigue. And after this interruption Broly continued with his speech, but it would be a shame to end the duel in this way, so. I will make Broly evolve once again. What? They all shouted overreacting. I evolved the true legendary Super Scion Broly to summon the true legendary Super Scion God Full Power Broly. Level 13 Divine Creator God Effect Monster. ATK Infinite. Death Infinite. Which is immune to all effects, so it is not affected by the effect of Slifer and denies all effects, so it also denies the effect of Slifer, so now it have 0 ATK and death points. In addition, I use the magic card, Broly says. Fuck you. That removes the hand of my adversaries from the game and I gain 1000 life points for each card removed. So now I have 16,000 life points, 4000 plus 12,000. And I'll be good one more time and I'll finish my turn, Broly said calmly as he finished his turn casually. Adam 3000 LFP. Yugi 1400 LFP. Broly 16000 LFP. We hate. Infinite attack and defense? Immune to everything and negates everything. Why didn't you write that he's invincible and that's it? Yugi's grandfather said very angry, so much that they had Joey and Tristan had to grab him so he wouldn't rush over Broly. Ha 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 ha. In fact this is a card that can minimally capture my splendor, Broly said, admiring himself with satisfaction regardless of the criticism of him and his card. But not everything was screaming, also nervousness and despair, specifically for Yugi. It can't be, he has an invincible card in his field that makes all the others useless, his life points are too high. Slifer has become completely harmless, the magic cards and traps have no effect and are denied. I don't have cards in my hand. We, we can't win. That's right, sink into misery useless child who couldn't win without a spirit helping him. UCI is the best fucking Yugi of all. Broly thought with a sinister inner smile like the Joker of Batman. But nevertheless. Yugi. Don't fall into despair. Remember, there is no invincible card, they all have a weakness. Trust in the heart of the cards and your friends, they are the key to winning, said Adam so that Yugi would not give up, with the typical motivational shonen manga speech. Stop this stupid's cheesy speeches and play. I have more things to do, thought Broly, who was starting to get tired of this pantomime. Turn 7. You're right Adam. Destiny draw. Yugi said drawing the card and smiling upon see what he had in his hand, great. Just the card I wanted. Yes, great, Broly thought, imagining what would happen. I use the mythical magic card, Twist of Destiny, which can be activated only if this is the only card in my hand, the opponent's life points are higher than mine by 10.000 points and the attack points of an adversary monster would be able to reduce my points and his life points to zero, there is an Egyptian god in the field and the other two are in the cemetery or removed from play. And their activation and effect cannot be denied, ignoring other denial effects, Yugi said describing the activation effects and effects of his convenient card. Off ko yururusi. How convenient. He had a card specifically for this situation. What a surprise. Fucking Yugi crazy cheats. Broly thought, who was having several deja vus of how Yugi used to win the important duels he won in the last moment, but he should have lost. And this card allows me to summon a very special monster, but unfortunately that monster is summoned in the next turn, Yugi said ending his turn. Adam 3000 LFP. Yugi 14 LFP. Broly 16000 LFP. Turn 8. But fortunately the next turn is my turn. Thanks to the effect of Yugi's card I summon the definitive Egyptian god, Amunare the Primordial. Level 13 Divine Divine Beast Effect Monster. ATK 0. Death 0 Inch Adam said, summoning a practically invisible god. Aha! 
I knew that Yugi had an ace up his sleeve. Joey shouted when he saw that the duel could still be won. This is, the Egyptian god Amun. One god even older than the RA, Slifer, or Obelisk. Ishizu said astonished to see the apparition of that card. Bullshit. That god didn't exist in this story. You just traveled to the past and IT wasn't here. And they accuse me of inventing cards? He just invented a fucking Egyptian god. Fucking hypocrites. Broly thought as he got angry, so much that for a few seconds he thought of destroying the world. You'll see. You may have an indestructible monster with infinite points of attack and defense, that your life points are higher than ours and that we cannot make any attacks or lower your life points, but... That is not the only way in which a duel can be won and fortunately this card allows me that alternative, Adam said with a victorious smile on his face giving a sermon to Broly about the rules of the game. Yes. Yes, very very convenient, thought Broly, looking at Adam suspiciously, weariness and disgust. And the effect of this god who cannot be denied is to sacrifice himself and all my life points to remove from the game all the cards of our hands and decks, also denying all effect for the entire game of the cards removed by this effect. Adam said with confidence and heroism, sacrificing himself to activate this effect. Adam 0 LFP. Yugi 14 LFP. Broly 16,000 LFP. Son of a bitch, Broly thought, who even now was surprised of how fucking convenient his reality warping that allow him to win in every duel was. And of course. Joey and friends had to act as stupid's narrators. Oh no. Adam's points have dropped to zero, that means he has lost. T said that it seemed she really didn't understand what had happened. No. He has only sacrificed himself so that Yugi could win, said Yugi's grandfather, who unlike others had understood what had happened. But, he has eliminated all his cards and he only has 14 life points left. How are he going to win? Mokuba asked, another useless stupid without his alter ego. He won't need to do anything, he has already won, he will win as soon as Broly's turn begins, Joey said he could hardly suppress the desire to celebrate the victory of his friends. That's right, in case someone at the start of their turn doesn't have cards to draw from their deck they will have automatically lost the duel, and the next turn is the turn of that monster, said Sido Kaiba, who had finally woken up. I finally understand. Said T, who after more than 200 episodes finally understood the rules of the game. And I understand that this is a play would not have been possible fi now were for their teamwork. Yugi and Adam have managed to win because they trust each other, he said contributing with the cheesy ting of the moment. Please T, do us all a favor and become mute, Broly thought, that was seriously thinking of turning off the sound of the public. That's right, as soon as my turn ends, and you have to draw a card at the beginning of your turn, you will have lost Broly. Thank you, you have given me a great duel with my partner before having the final duel against my partner, Adam said coolly, sentencing Broly to lose. And Broly panicked when he saw that he would inevitably lose, OHNO. No. It's not possible. I should be the king of the games. I should be the winner. I show. Or maybe not. Alt stop dramatizing and overacting. As the ideal conditions have been given, before you finish your turn. I active from my extra deck my favorite card, which I will allow you to read. Troll God Broly. Level. Divine Creator God Fusion Synchro XYZ Link Effect Monster. ATK Infinite. Death Infinite. In the event that Yugi and Adam cheat to win the duel or to imminently win the duel, Broly automatically wins the duel by denying the victory or possible victory of Yugi and Adam. This effect cannot be denied or prevented, ignoring any condition including those that deny conditions. You have lost Yugi, fuck you. Nice effect, right? Broly said reading the card and projecting it to everyone, shamelessly showing in the image of that card that would come to be, the troll face meme made with his face. Ha 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 ha. I won. I won. And you don't. I am the first to defeat you cleanly in a duel. I am the king of the games and you are not. Fuck you second one. Ha 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 ha. Kaiba now you are the third one inch Broly said in an extremely mocking and unpleasant way, celebrating as a repellent little boy who was the world champion in something. Way hot. This is inadmissible. It is impossible that a cart like these exist. This duel was tricked from the beginning, IT was impossible that I could win. You have cheated. Yugi and Adam shouted, who had forgotten their sportsmanship, just like the public, who screamed like them, or more and even started throwing things at Broly. 
But Broly with great anger increased the gravity around the temple, causing everyone to kneel before him, are you accusing me too cheap? You? You who just invented an Egyptian god to defeat me. You who in your first duel with Kaiba summoned Exodia with two left arms. You who fused a monster with a monster and magic card with a normal polymerization and created infinite Karibos with a card that doesn't do that, against Kaiba too. You who summoned a monster with infinite attack plus one when you faced a monster with infinite attack. You who attacked your own magic card with a normal monster without effect and destroyed it to lower the tide of Omi to kill all the fish of your opponent. Which doesn't have a fucking sense. You that when you was losing it all against Egami, you summoned a random monster of which you didn't even specify its effect or attack and when it attacked you simply won? And I still haven't exposed all your cheats. You accuse me of cheating. Everything in this manga slash anime is solved with a deus ex machina in the last minute. You are incapable of win a duel justifiably. You always invent a new card that was never in your deck and that may never be again to win in difficult or imposable situations. The story of this manga slash anime is a fucking shit that works only with conveniences. Fuck you. I won. Accept it. Eat my balls Yugi crazy cheats. Shouted Broly in an equal or more violent way than when he was in the world of to love Rue traumatizing Rito. Ah, some shouted since they felt that his body weighed a ton. And now that I've won and I've been crowned as king of the games. I'm going home, I have important things to do. Fuck you cheaters, Broly said disappearing in the same way that he appeared as angry as happy and satisfied regardless of the state in which the protagonists and secondary characters had been left, and their complaints. Desire Realm Broly appeared right in front of Abito, Rin, Najimi, Kamagawa and Mantamion, who were still watching the television screen where he was broadcasting until a few seconds ago, and sat next to him with joy and satisfaction. Ha 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 ha. Who was going to say it? I have faced the king of duels and won without cheating. Awesome right? Broly said showing off his achievement in front of his employees. Yes, you are awesome. Abito said with a legendary sarcasm, since the other four could not stop looking at Broly, possibly waiting for his face to fall from the little shame he had when he said he hadn't cheated. I know, but you will have to celebrate later. In a few hours there will be a party to commemorate that we have finalized the last phase of my plan, and... Oh oh. I think we have a great 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 problem. Broly said revealing genuine concern. Origin reality. In the same building where Avalon worked, but on the top floor of the gigantic and luxurious building. In a huge and extremely luxurious office from which the entire city could be seen panoramically. And in that office was a person. An extremely important person in that company, and not only in that company, also throughout the origin reality. Since this man is Origin, he changed his name due to his delusions of greatness, the president and founder of Origin Entertainment Company, the most successful and powerful organization of all that reality, the discoverer of the other realities and the one that in secret exploited them for his own benefit and those of his circle of trust. The man who conspired against the entire omniverse and, the most powerful being of that reality either biologically and politically of this reality, and therefore of all others. The head of Avalon, who like Avalon did hardly anything at all throughout the day and only nervously watched a progress bar, which was at 99%. Until a stunning woman dressed as a sexy secretary entered inside office with a futuristic tablet in her hand. Hello President Ricardo. Again looking at the progress bar of the Origin Project for hours? Asked Olivia, who has been friend and secretary of President Origin even before the Origin Entertainment Company was founded and he changed his name. For the last time this morning. Olivia, call me Origin. And yes. I started the most important phase of my plan, the Origin project made billions of billions of billions of billion of billions, years ago. And from a millions of ago this damn progress bar is still quiet in 99%. I have lived a lot and will continue to do so and I have great, great patience, but, no matter how much patience I have, it is tortuous to see how your destiny is so close and not being able to taste it yet, Origin said, that he did not take his eye off the 99% progress bar, hoping that it would become 100%. The older ones will understand this situation and despair, wait for a week to download a movie and that the bar of progress stay for an abnormal time at 99%. Author's Reflection Yes. I understand perfectly. Olivia said in a double sense, referring to her private loving life with her childhood boss friend who was too obsessed with her project and did not pay attention to her, changing the subject, this is the report of the decade. 
We remain the number one company in history for the umpteenth time in a row, the most beloved, the most popular, the richest, the most influential and the most envied. Thanks to our customers who work for us without knowing it, we are quickly collecting more and more skills, data and samples of other realities, our partners become increasingly powerful and happy, and there is no leak or attempt to filter our true activities. The same every 10 years, Olivia said who seemed to get bored with every word that came out of her mouth, as if it were a tedious and repetitive routine. And all thanks to me. Ha 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 ha. Perfect, thanks Olivia. You know I like to hear that from your mouth. It always makes me feel better. Origin said satisfiedly putting his legs on the table happily and carelessly while Olivia smiled at him anything new or strange fact that happened recently. All the same as usual, except, that we have found a strange change in behavior in one of our oldest employees, Olivia replied, not giving much importance to this matter, but, it was the only unusual thing that could be mentioned. Oh, who is it? Origin said with some interest, he desperately needed something that was not his progress bar or the games, series, and movies his company produced to entertain himself correctly. And when he heard the question of his boss and love interest since she was 10,000 years old, she replied, it is Avalon, he is. Eh. Avalon, yes, the guy in charge of the ice guy of the era movie saga. It was one of my first and brightest ideas, which continues to give us great benefits era after era. I am surprised that people like this kind of shitey genre so much. What's wrong with him? Origin said interrupting Olivia, since he knew who Avalon was and what is his work. First because he was the president of the company and had to know who his employees were, second because he had been the one who proposed the idea of Ice Sky of the era, and third because he was a big fan of the Ice Sky genre and practically saw everything minimally decent of that genre, although he tried to deny it to become a cult, since it was a genre not highly acclaimed by the most select critic. Nothing important, but rare for him, or for anyone. Normally he doesn't do anything until a few decades near the next premiere, however, now for the first time he has started working a few decades after starting the project, he has started to work and from what I see quite seriously. Olivia said, that seemed surprised, since nobody used to work too hard on that reality as there was not much to do, especially Avalon whose only project had to be completed millions of years in the future. Well, he has become proactive since this is his last film before his retirement in a trillions of years or he had a slight inspiration that couldn't miss, as a former artist and fan of Aisuke of the era. I wanted to be like that, Origin said and thought, who was glad to think that Avalon he was struggling in a movie of his favorite saga. And not only that, he has also spent just now all his dimensional trips, trips to dimensions close to the dimension in which the film will happen. When he normally never spends any, according to his profile he has never liked to travel, or do anything, Olivia said adding more strange details to Avalon's behavior change. People change my dear Olivia, 13,684 years ago you didn't like a short skirt either, and now you wear them every day, Origin said taking away the matter and looking at her perfect legs. Yes. I do it after I found out that you liked, idiot, Olivia thought before giving the most important data of all, but in one of those dimensions inhabits a being of alpha slash omega category. And upon hearing those words, Origin's expression changed slightly and get up from the chair with energy, mmm this is something curious. I think we will have to pay a little visit to Avalon. Avalon office. 1245. Avalon as every half day was alone in his office looking at the computer without much to do, when suddenly. Hi Avalon. Are you having a productive day? Origin said, which had teleported together with Olivia in front of the almost asleep Avalon. Eh. Cree. President Origin. Yes, it is a very productive day, sir. Said the startled Avalon, who did not expect at all that the president himself personified in his office, while he wasn't doing anything. Ha 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 ha, I'm glad. You see, it has reached my ears that you have already begun to make progress with the next production of Ice of the Era. Is that true? Origin asked in a friendly way to Avalon, who was trying to put on his clothes and correct his posture to appear more formal in front of his greatest superior. Making progress. Yes, yes, of course President Origin, just as you say sir. Avalon said, not daring to contradict in the least the most powerful being of all. Great, I'm glad to hear this, great, if he started working so early in this production it must be because he was inspired, the next movie seems promising. By the way, they have also told me that you have been interested in other dimensions close to the one where the next film will take place. Is it due to something special? Origin asked once again trying not to show interest in the movie, but he was and wanted to know if there was any relationship between these travels and the film. Or, other nearby dimensions. Yes, 
that is to inform me, inform me firsthand about the next movie, since the protagonist is said Avalon, who was very very nervous to be in front of the president, the most powerful being of all, especially in the state where his office was, and what he had been doing recently and now. TSH TSH, you don't need to bore me with unnecessary details. I don't want to know anything about anything, I don't want any kind of spoiler, I want to enjoy the movie on the day of the premiere without knowing anything. I don't even think about watching the trailer. We had only come because certain changes in your behavior seem strange to us, but we see that they have been positive changes, so, we will simply let you continue, working." Origen said, who was satisfied with Avalon's intimidated attitude, he liked that the others treated him as someone superior and extremely important, however, he wanted to leave as soon as possible, since he didn't want Avalon to do a spoiler by mistake. Oh, and by the way, I will not ask you why you have decided to travel to a world where an alpha slash omega being lives, but I inform you that you have to follow a certain protocol in those cases, so I have already cancelled your access to that reality. We will not take it into account on this occasion since apparently you are not performing and you weren't going to perform any extractive maneuver of that dimension. Right? Origen said in a way that was certainly threatening before leaving through the door, telling Avalon what he should do and not. Yes Mr. President. Whatever you say Mr. President. At your service Mr. President. Avalon said bowing several times in submission and apology. Okay, take care of yourself and be productive, Origen said with a big smile as he walked out the door accompanied by Olivia, who greeted Avalon politely, who was about to stagger. Pam. Sound of door closing. I like onomatopoeia. And within a few seconds of going out the door, walk a little and make sure nobody was listening. Ricardo, you have noticed, right? Said Olivia, who looked seriously at her boss, childhood friend, and love interest because of what she saw and experienced in Avalon's office. Of course I have realized my dear Olivia, but call me Origin, fuck. After all, it's not the first time I've heard of something like that. Origin said, like his secretary and friend-zoned, unconsciously, childhood friend, he was quite serious, but also excited by what he had seen in that office. And upon hearing his boss's affirmative response, she immediately tried to provide a solution to earn points, and perhaps a romantic dinner together, so, we should. But as always, Origen came forward, don't worry. I know what we should do. But let's not discuss this in the hall, let's go to my office for more privacy. It is better that nobody hears what we have to say. Ha 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 ha. Desire Realm. 1245 Origin Reality Hour. In the overcrowded meeting room where absolutely all the members of the Immortal Legion were gathered, worth the redundancy, because the most important event desired by all was planned. It was a reason for joy, relaxation and celebration, but instead it had become one of the most tense, dangerous and undesirable moments of all, especially for Broly. Fuck. 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 Why did this have to happen? And precisely now. And precisely he. Calm. Calm. If it's him and he hasn't notified anyone under his mantle chain there's still some hope. Said Broly, who was in front of the screen of a huge and huge computer with dozens of keyboards, in which dozens of Broly's that worked with great concentration and speed. Damn, according to the simulations, there was only a 10% chance that the scenario could happen. Said Mayuri, who participated with Broly and the others to be able to create a super simulator based solely on super advanced technology, since magic and other abilities to predict the future wouldn't work with actions and reactions that occur in the origin reality. How serious is the situation? I understood that Broly is immortal as long as that strange dimension exists, and we too, asked Ichiryu, who being one of the newest additions didn't know very well what the implications of being discovered by President Origin were. Yes, theoretically Broly-sama cannot be destroyed while the formless realm exists and theoretically only Broly-sama can exist and interact with that dimension. But although the formless realm is a dimension with such unique characteristics and although it has laws of origin reality, it is still a dimension located below the origin reality and has been created with a power delivered to Broly-sama in the origin realm, so it is possible that origin is able to eliminate it. But even if he can't do it, it would put an end to our plans and could also prevent us from ever leaving the three realms anymore, said Aizen, explaining to everyone the seriousness of the situation. Come on guys don't be so pessimistic. We knew that this moment could come and we prepared for it. Don't panic, it is not the worst possible scenario. Luckily he is not expressing great disgust and is not asking excessively specific things, besides. Origin Reality. 12.45. Avalon as every half day was alone in his office looking at the computer without much to do, when suddenly. 
Hi Avalon. Are you having a productive day? Origin said, which had teleported together with Olivia in front of the almost asleep Avalon. Eh. Pre. President Origin. Yes, it is a very productive day, sir. Said the startled Avalon, who didn't expect at all that the president himself personified in his office, while he wasn't doing anything. Ha 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 ha, I'm glad. You see, someone has noticed that something curious happened when you made the delivery of powers based on karma. Is that true? Origin asked in a friendly way to Avalon, who was trying to put on his clothes and correct his posture to appear more formal in front of his greatest superior. Shit. They have noticed. Damn. Avalon, think of some excuse, one in which you don't lie at 100%, thought Avalon, who was trying to use each of his neurons to get out of that situation. The powers. I. I. I'm sorry President Origin. I just tried to minimize losses for the company. Avalon said, not daring to contradict in the least the most powerful being of all, especially when it was supposed to be good news for him. Really? I'm glad to hear that. Although, it should have been you who paid for those extra costs, but it doesn't matter, I'm not angry about that, nor will I charge you that cost or punish you. I'm a kind boss, right? Origin asked once again trying not to show interest in the movie, but he was and wanted to know if there was any relationship between these travels and the film. No, won't it cost me the cost? Yes, of course, of course he is kind, sir, the protagonist and I reached an agreement with which he was also satisfied, see, in return I gave him, the said Avalon, who was very very nervous to be in front of the president, the most powerful being of all, especially in the state his office was, and what he had been doing recently and now. TSH TSH, you don't need to bore me with unnecessary details. We had only come because nothing else had happened in the company and we had little to do, so we will let you continue, working, Origin said, who was satisfied with Avalon's intimidated attitude, he liked that the others treated him as someone superior and extremely important, however, he wanted to leave as soon as possible, since he didn't want Avalon to do a spoiler by mistake. Oh and, by the way, we are aware that you plan to retire in a few years, so we have thought that before your retirement it would be good to transfer your knowledge to the one that will replace you. I know it should be we who propose this measure, but we believe it would greatly improve your record that it would be you who claimed a substitute in a few million years. Do you agree? Origin said in a way that was certainly threatening before leaving through the door, telling Avalon what he should do and not. Yes Mr. President. Whatever you say Mr. President. At your service Mr. President. Avalon said bowing several times in submission and apology. Okay. Take care of yourself and be productive, Origin said with a big smile as he walked out the door accompanied by Olivia, who greeted Avalon politely, who was about to stagger. Pam. Sound of door closing. I like onomatopoeia. And a few seconds after Origin and Olivia came out the door, sit back in their chair and make sure nobody was watching. Avalon closed his eyes and... Master Avalon, do you want to activate the automatic function one more time? Said a robotic voice that was in Avalon's head. Yes, after this I need it, Avalon thought, speaking to the robotic voice of his head. Okay Master Avalon, enjoy your rest, from now on the i.a will take care of everything for you, the robotic voice inside Avalon's head answered once more. And at the end of the mental conversation with the machine Avalon's eyes went blank, and the next thing he saw was the ceiling of his room. He was at home, stretched out on a futuristic bed and with a virtual reality device on his head, a device that was automatically removed from his head and after getting out of bed. Mamma Mia. I had never been so scared in my life. He president. Of all the people the president came to see me. And he also knows what I did. Ugh, I have been lucky that there have been no reprisals for that, and that he or his sexy secretary has not realized that I was using this incredible technology. Well. I don't think they'll come back. I'll take the rest of the day off, said Avalon putting on the virtual reality helmet again after drinking something. I.A in case someone enters while I play this video game please let me know, and if it's something serious give me control and play for me until I come back, Avalon told the I.A of his virtual reality device. Of course Master Avalon, it is 1300 hours, I will return your substitute to your house when the workday ends at 1900 hours, as always, the I.A responded to Avalon while he was already entering his user and password to access a video game, which was Avalon slash 123456789. I.A, substitute. I don't know what would be my life without you, in fact I don't know how I could live without you until now," said Avalon, who almost dropped a tear due to the great happiness he felt right now. Desire Realm
1300 hours origin reality local hour. In addition, the president is a geek who secretly loves his own ice sky idea, so Avalon will not trouble him or try to read his thoughts on a large scale, and it has been very easy for me to modify the input and output message from our Avalon substitute. Ha 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 ha. Broly said laughing in a corrupt and despicable way while caressing Mantamion, who was trying to escape from Broly's hands. I don't like to recognize it, and less work on the project Perfect Jigai since it was originally an invention of that despicable man, but it can be given quite interesting uses, although I would have preferred create one more, proactive, Mayuri said, who looked from the screen as the Avalon substitute pretended to do something in the office while the real Avalon did absolutely nothing at home. You have already seen what has happened, when we have been a little proactive we have drawn attention, we have to leave it like this. But I agree, if we add to that the technology based on cloning that I developed in my reality, the one of GT Robo of the reality of Toriko, and the one that Broly obtained in his reality and in the origin, it has been possible to make a substitute with intelligence artificial and with automatic mode so perfect that almost no one would be able to distinguish it from the original Orochimaru said, who is and had enjoyed the creation of this stupid but useful project. It is certainly an interesting toy, but the really funny thing was to see how we coaxed that idiot who pretended to be a god. A few constant spams on his work computer, controlled by us, at a time when he was more bored and less willing to work and after a few months after seeing the advantages of our product, he decided to recreate it with his replicating machine, and since then he has never returned to the office. Black Zetsu said that he had enjoyed a lot in his project to manipulate Avalon to buy and eat the poisoned apple that was the substitute and its artificial intelligence, although it had seemed too easy compared to what he did in his world. Ha 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 ha. Exactly, with this we can not only control what Avalon hears and says in case someone asks questions about what I do on his behalf, as it happened today. With this I can also impersonate all the time it is in automatic mode, which is 99.99% of the day, if not 100%. Therefore, I no longer need to wait for him to leave to work my cyber magic or expose myself. Ha 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 ha. Broly said with the same face as before stroking Mantamion, who had already given up trying to escape and only prayed that this torture would end soon. But, isn't this a problem? Origin has just closed the access to the most important reality of all in which you have not yet been able to. Said Kamagawa, who tried to be a bit negative in this situation. Don't worry about it. I have already managed to establish an embassy and thanks to Avalon's computer, to which I will no longer have access to that reality, although I doubt it will be necessary again. I have been able to infiltrate successfully and escape the sight of those three annoying sisters. Now we only have to wait a few million years to get the precious prize. Broly said in a sinister and evil way, to radically change his face and tone to say happily, but. I won't wait another second without celebrating. Especially when after this we have more reasons than ever to celebrate. Let's go guys. Gee. They all shouted with joy in front of the great banquet, looking at the existential emptiness of the desire realm where there was absolutely nothing. Origin reality. 1300 hours. Origin's office. Olivia and Origin were back in Origin's office, where they were sitting on the couch and talking like friends on a boring Sunday afternoon. You realize that this was not really Avalon, right? Olivia asked Origin, who was taking a brandy next to a virtual fireplace. Yes, in your case it was because you couldn't read the thought if I am not mistaken, Origin said to Olivia, who was fixing her nails. Yes, I couldn't, even though I am in a higher rank than him, it should be impossible to escape my ability, so it must be someone else, Olivia replied. You're almost right, it is not another person, it is a kind of robot from which the true Avalon works form his home. I didn't realize it at the beginning, but when I did a little scan of our reality I realized that there was an Avalon in his house connected to a virtual reality device, and his heartbeats matched perfectly with the shocks he had in our conversation. But I didn't read or read his thoughts, I don't want spoilers, said and thought Origin finishing his 14th glass of brandy Origin said and thought Origin finishing his 14th glass of brandy. Then what do we do? We opened a disciplinary file for him. Said Olivia, who was too strict with the rules. Ha 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 is not necessary. Deep down I find these things funny, almost all of our employees have modified the cameras, their CPU and practically everything to not feel uncomfortable and take advantage of the time when they have little work, since there is not much to do, but it is the first time that someone tries so hard in doing nothing in such a professional way, Origin said, who also did similar things before founding his corporation. That's why I say it. Not only has he breached one of the most absolute rules regarding trips to Alpha slash Omega realities, he is also being too lazy in working hours, said Olivia, who was very bothered by that kind of behavior, since she was the secretary of the boss, 
unlike the others she was very productive. Come on Olivia, they are artists, you have to leave them some freedom to be inspired and create innovative things. As long as they do their job with the right quality on the day the delivery has been established, it doesn't matter for me. As for the reality Alpha slash Omega, hasn't extracted anything and its access has been cut off. Besides, even if he started now, it would need millions of eternities to achieve that, and he will retire in an era and a few thousand years to train his substitute. And I'm almost ready to accomplish it, Origin said with a wicked smile and face as he drank his glass of brandy number 189. If you say so, by the way, a friend gave me two tickets to see Ice Guy of the Era 87890984393038374859593676 Would you like to go see the movie with me and then have dinner at my house? Said Olivia, who knew Origin's geek's tastes and took advantage of the moment he got drunk to seduce him. Eh. Ice Guy of the Era. No. I don't like it too much, but if you insist on going. I won't tell you no, since it's you. Origin said, being unable to recognize in public or private his tastes once again. Desire Realm. Broly had finally finished his long crusade through the worlds of the Shonen Jump. Well, more than a crusade, it had been a long journey with the aim of expanding its territory, acquiring glory, wealth, and new technologies from those places, kidnapping people to brainwash them and joining his cause. Yes, something similar to a crusade, but without religious reasons, maybe, since he considers himself a god, so, well. A long journey of more than a decade where he risked his life to return to the origin reality and turn it into his base of operations, infiltrated various worlds of the shonen jump, assimilated his laws, got new follower, assimilated new powers, acquired new knowledge, researched new data tirelessly, tricked Avalon like a fucking retarded, and he even managed to avoid the final boss. A trip that finally ended. And like every long and hard journey, it must end with a great party. Clin 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 crink. Crack. Broly shook a glass cup with a fork, breaking it unintentionally, to capture the attention of all his subordinates, who ate, drank and chatted among themselves. Ahem, boys, girls and other weird things. I won't make this a great and long speech, mainly because otherwise the food will get cold and I want to eat what Frozy and I have prepared in perfect conditions. It has been a long trip, I had a great time with you, I have learned a lot and we will continue to do it from tomorrow, blah blah blah. So, enjoy the food. While you also enjoy the show that I have prepared for you, Broly said before disappearing from the spaceship's conference room, while the floor, ceiling, and walls of the ship became transparent to everyone's amazement. Uh, what will he have prepared for us this time? Said Kagaya, who was partly a little scared, since this was a banquet and at all the banquets Broly played a joke on her. Until, on the horizon, those with good eyesight could see seven gigantic planetary objects that flew from several directions towards single point. And from those seven objects. Gaia Haiei. A column of light of immeasurable size emerged towards the immensity and in a few seconds seemed to cover all that empty and infinite dimension, and then. What the hell is this? Maiowu shouted the most impressionable ones, like Rin, Black Zetsu, Dio, Kars. Mantamun, and of course. And they didn't lack reasons to be impressed, since a huge anthropomorphic green slash golden, muscular, and with many faces and fangs dragon emerged from that almost infinite column of light. UAA. What flavor will that giant lizard have? Shouted the most ardent and lovers of cools things like Bu, Madara, Kamagawa, Ihiko, Wamu, and Acacia, of course. This guy is a real box of surprises. You surprise that he never explains to us said the intellectuals and calmed as Hagoromo, Aizen, Iwak and Najimi, and of course Mayuri, that was quite frustrated. About hundreds of kilometers from the spacecraft, Broly kept floating in front of his particular eternal dragon. Acnologia. Hello Master Broly, what do you want from me this time? Acnologia asked bowing to Broly as a sign of respect and admiration. Come on. Acnology you know you don't need to ask. You know perfectly what I want, Broly said with a confident smile of complicity with his magnificent creation. I'm sorry Master Broly, it's the protocol, right now I grant your wish, said Acnologia, whose eyes become red as a sign that he was working, work at most once a year, a fucking dream. Back in the spaceship. What exactly is that dragon doing? His eyes have not stopped shining from a while ago, said Abito and Madara, who felt uncomfortable upon seeing the red eyes of a dragon so large, and with so many. One moment, look. 
Dio said pointing to Akinlogia, that was dissipating in seven different beams of light. And after a few seconds, precisely where Akinlogia used to be. What? What? The hell is that? Thing? Said Frost very terrified, pointing his finger to the horizon at a very bright and very small point of energy. That amount of energy, is immeasurable, said Midora, who even become a little altered when he saw the bright spot that Frost pointed. This is, it can't be true. I can't believe he has reached such power. This is, it can't be true. I can't believe he has reached such power. How said, who had already been forced to come to the meetings, since Broly managed to solve the problem he had, the king of the stars that seemed to understand what that white point on the space was. That was when Najimi moved closer to the wall window and looked at the luminous point with nostalgia, I never thought it would be possible, but, it is nostalgic and beautiful that after 3 trillion 10 billion 655 million years I can witness once again. A big bang. Big bang? The majority shouted when they heard Najimi's statement, either because of what they were about to witness, or to know that she existed before the big bang. That's right, although mine will be much more special than the one you saw. Broly said that he sneaked up behind his impressed subjects, and took the opportunity to eat from the nearby dishes. bro o o i i i i What the hell is going on? Asked the ones who appreciated his life and common sense. I think it's obvious. I have told to a dragon friend of mine. That it was time to build, urbanize and populate this empty infinite dimension that I created, although the information of the previous lives of the gourmet family as gourmet gods and the ancient memories of Najimi have given me some inspiration for improve this moment, Broly said joining the same place where his subordinates were, and just as they were doing, he looked towards the singularity that would soon become the birth of a whole universe. Oh. Have you asked a dragon for help? Can't you do it alone? Najimi said with great sarcasm to tease her arrogant boss amicably. Acknology was created by me and is part of my power, so technically I have done it, especially when I even assimilated it. In addition, a good boss must know how to delegate to his underlings. But enough of talks, it's time to enjoy a show never seen before by almost everyone here while I put you in a safe place. Broly said applying some of his skills throughout the spaceship to isolate it from the desire realm, allowing to see what happens but without being affected by what happens inside. It is said that God needed seven days, with one rest, to create everything that exists under the sky. However, I will only need, a snap, Broly said snapping his fingers, but unlike in some movies, he didn't do it to eliminate lives or recover them, but to create them from scratch. Clash. Sorry, I didn't know the onomatopoeia to put on a big bang, it wasn't explained in Wikipedia XD. The singularity detonated and with its detonation an explosion of immeasurable scale occurred throughout the desire realm, an explosion that didn't start from a fixed point, but from every corner of the dimension. And within a few seconds, large quantities of primal matter began to form at the same time that it expanded and fused together, producing large quantities of different elements at an excessively accelerated rate. As if the time had been accelerated millions of times. And with it in a few seconds the first stars formed, and with it the galaxies, in a few minutes the first planets, and with a little more time. Wonderful. I am witnessing the process of creation of the same universe that I once tried to tame. And all in a few seconds, even, the creation new life forms. Carr said, fascinated to see in quick motion as the first forms of life began to form. That's, no, they look like. Gourmet gods, but, their energy. Acacia said when he saw how primitive energy giants began to become aware of themselves and walk over the surface of some galaxies. Good appreciation. This is the universe that I am creating, a universe that combines all advantages of all the dimensions that I have visited and without any disadvantages. As you can see even in its early stages, I am creating a universe where the foods of the world of Toriko are everywhere, as if everything were a huge and abundant, farthest lands, but of course an improved one. One that not only relies on appetite energy, but also contains ki, nen, chakra, senjutsu, riatsu, all in one, making it tens of times stronger and more appetizing. A universe that following the pattern seen in Toriko will constantly evolve by the explosion of its more developed planets, thus allowing a development without limits. A universe with aliens and divine beings that will be born one after the other, equipped with stands, innumerable skills, eyes, and absurd, cool and convenient genetics. A universe with infinite potential. Like its creator, Broly said while the rest watched in wonder how the divine and primitive beings were born, 
grew, evolved reproduced and some died one after another in the great cycle of life, where more and more planets began to adapt to the optimal conditions to have life. And Broly greatly satisfied with his creation and the expression of his subordinates said, however this is not what I'm most proud of, follow me, well, you have no choice, I'm driving. And with another snap the spaceship disappeared from the creation of the universe and moved to another place. In another place, whose name I can't remember. A place bathed in white, an infinite white dimension with sophisticated research buildings and We are in the form realm. Said Orochimaru, who was perhaps the most familiar with this timeless dimension in which he had been an incalculable eternity investigating non-stop. We are in the form realm. Said Orochimaru, who was perhaps the most familiar with this timeless dimension in which he had been an incalculable eternity investigating non-stop, what do you want to show us? And that was when he raised his head and noticed that something was different from a few hours ago and said, what is that? It was then that Hal, absorbed and stunned, watched breathlessly at the great and endless collision of lights above him. And clenching his fists he felt insignificant and defeated again, since he knew perfectly well that he was above his head. Damn you bastard, you wanted me for this, no, you didn't want, me. How much you will laugh even about my dream and position. You just wanted the great spirits to, create this, abomination. These. Universal spirits. How shouted when he saw that above him there was a monstrous, endless, and abominable version of his life's purpose. It was similar to the great spirits of Hao, the Alpha and Omega of all the souls of planet Earth, over which the Shaman King had absolute power over the souls of the creatures of his world as well as the knowledge and powers of all those who are part or were part of that structure. However, this was infinitely more colossal, mystical, and intimidating. And Broly feeling proud and satisfied to see the astonished expression of how and those who had understood the implications of what was happening on the form realm said, Mmm, -hmm, it's not a bad name, although I would call it. Broly's Universal Spirits. Ha ha ha. Don't get mad how, you were important too, if you weren't, I would have absorbed them before you had fused in the ritual. But yes, this was extremely important. And while Broly rose in the sky of his second dimension he continued explaining to his intrigued public, one of the most important questions of humanity has been. What is there after death? I always thought there wasn't thing, but fortunately it wasn't like that, there is life after death. And at least four of the mangas I've been in, have a different version of this phenomenon. However, the most useful for me, at least at its base, is the one of Howe's universe. Since it's a construct made with the souls of every living being that has existed and that gives me control of those that exist, that will inevitably end here. A construct that like how, I can use in combat. Admire my oversoul Broly's three realms. And with those words the cumulus of souls created by the birth and death of millions of beings within the few hours, accelerated millions of times, of the creation of the universe along with the influence and power of Broly. Created an ethereal and colossal humanoid being with three eyes. Bigger than a gourmet god. Bigger than the biggest cluster of galaxies. Bigger than the fucking Super Tengen Tapa Gurn Lagan. And it looked like Broly, which floated in the pupil of the third eye in a triumphant and almighty way. And despite this act of arrogance and narcissism nobody complained, whispered or criticized. They were too impressed, absorbed, scared, incredulous and amazed by Broly's new creation, so much that some were even about to faint from looking at a being impossible to understand and accept for their minds. Ho ho ho, if you now think big and powerful despite the few souls with which it is now formed, imagine when a few years pass. Ehem. Ehem. But I could not conform with only a version infinitely superior to Howe's great spirits due to the infinite size and capacity of my universe. In the great spirit of Shaman King there is no future for those who are part of that mass of souls that are grouped into societies. But that was easy to improve by including the concepts of the death of Dragon Ball, where it is possible to train and acquire new knowledge, also Bleach, where after death it is still possible to acquire new powers of Shinigami, Hollow or Quincher and have children like as it were a second life but without the danger of a second death like Dragon Ball. And also adding the structure of Toriko's world of souls, in which time and space are relative, it has been possible for me to adapt everything to store my great spirit connected with my desire realm in my form realm, where there is no time and space is also undetermined. In this way the living and the dead will be separated by dimensions, although as in Dragon Ball, Bleach and Toriko. I have thought of ways to make both interact without the need for someone to die, and of course I'll continue with the reincarnation system, also with the appetite demon one. Broly said undoing his oversoul and reuniting with his astonished followers. Why can't you even let the dead rest in peace? Said Rin, who wasn't comfortable knowing that more people could come back to life, a little hypocritical for her part, as always.
and there was no other place to put this, this is where my laboratory is located, Mayuri said, who wasn't very enthusiastic about having an unnameable cluster of souls over him, despite being a Shinigami. Because in this way death won't be the end of the evolution for the living beings of this universe and therefore Broly-sama will be able to nourish itself with more knowledge and power of beings that will be able to evolve in death, subsequently those dead people who learned in death that can travel again to the physical world, that is always evolving, again to learn more, and once he dies again the cycle will be repeated once more. And I suppose that in your creation you also implemented the distribution of soul and Oswalan of Iwak in each living being to not only gain those powers through the great spirits, right? Said Aizen, who as Shinigami and master of the plans understood perfectly what Broly wanted to do with this other side and universe. And I also steal a tiny and imperceptible amount of energy from all my powerful infinite universe just like Moro to make me even stronger too. Jajajaja you have understood perfectly. Yes, I am a recycling master. Ha 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 ha. There is nothing like having an infinite universe to exploit, Broly said contributing his curious sense of humor while blushing since he feel flattered. What you are is perverse. You are using all the life you have created to make yourself stronger and stronger in such a corrupt way, most people with some principles thought. Well, we have seen enough of my form realm, let's go back to the desire realm. I have to settle in my own universe, Broly said teleporting all the people once more to the desire realm. Desire Relam. Broly and friends appeared again in another location, but this time it wasn't the interior of his luxurious spaceship, but a neonate planet, of titanic size but paradisiacal in which the first complex animals had not yet appeared. Paradise in which Broly planted a flag with his face and said pointing to one place and another, I will call this planet Broly Planet, this region will be Broly Land, here Broly City will be erected, in the center I'll create the Broly Mansion and here. However, Dio interrupted him when he saw that he was becoming a property registrant without any sense or measure. This. Broly, is there anything else you want to show us? Interruption that was applauded by the public, but especially by the scientific squad, who were waiting for the moment when Broly made public their great advances. Well. I expected to show you the amazing effects of my newly evolved stand Heaven Requiem Strauss. How have we managed to merge T. Rinne Sharingan, Rinnegan, Mangekyo Eternal Sharingan, Tensigen, and Byakugan to create the definitive Jujutsu, which despite the protests of the co-creators I named it Broligan. Not to mention how I got a Sun Meme mode more cool and powerful than anyone else, especially because I can access the natural energy of my universe whenever I want, ah, and the little surprise with the tails too. My great handling of spiritual powers and the many other abilities of my oversoul, as well as my amazing Kido and other spiritual magical abilities. My creation and improvement of skills based on those I acquired from Najimi, Ihiko and Kamagawa, as well as my own style. And of course as I have been able to merge the red, blue, green, black and white gourmet creating the grey gourmet cells with all its advantages without any disadvantage, which I have managed to combine perfectly with my scion s cells and my monkey tail, making my powers multiply in an exaggerated way when I am transformed into both. But. Due to the unexpected interruption of origin, we have run out of time for that, since I had timed everything to conclude exactly with the beginning of a certain event, to create more impact. Broly said, who was feeling quite sorry for not being able to show off his awesome new abysmal and fabulous superpowers. You could have saved this long explanation and present at least one, said Mayuri, who was quite upset that Broly didn't show one of his achievements. No, if I cannot make a good and spectacular presentation followed by a round of questions and signatures, it is better not to leave it for another time. You either do things well or better not do them. And with a snap of his fingers the paradisiac field in which they were became a large movie theater, and upon appearing here they were all forced to sit in the seats by a strange force and were forced to look too. But forget about that for the moment, since now begins the live broadcast one of one of the most important moments of my previous life, current life, and therefore of your lives, Broly said turning on the giant screen of Brawlivision and his remote control while eating BB corns and Mellow Cola. Dragon Ball Multiverse. Seven Universe. Beerus Planet. Year 761, October 21st. Plus. Bomb. Clash. <sighs> this was the sound that could be heard all over the planet from the inverted pyramid of the God of Destruction of Universe 7, since. Oh ho ho. Not bad Broly San, in a short time you have managed to force me to use both hands, and without transforming, just using your godly energy, that deserves a celebration. Wiss was training with Broly, as usual at that hour each day. Celebration. Let me guess. Do you expect me to cook something? Whis sensei Said Broly, who was still chasing Whis without using special skills, attacking with all the limbs of his body. 
Oh. You've discovered me. But it can't be helped, your food is simply the best in the universe, Wiss said, blushing because he was discovered so quickly, while dogged and blocked Broly's physical attacks and occasionally counterattacked. Well. If you praise me like that I suppose I could have a detail with my sensei, Broly said as he stopped Wiss attacks and tried to be the one who attacked again. Plus. Bomb. Clash. Plum. At one point, Broly was momentarily distracted, which caused one of Wiss' powerful counterattacks to hit Broly directly, sending him several kilometers away. Ups. Broly are you alright? You shouldn't be distracted while. Wiss said, scolding Broly for a very unusual act for him when. Slap. An ape's tail that appeared out of nowhere hit him directly in the head, creating in his head a comical bump. Oh, yeesh. Wiss shouted in fright and pain. What did you say about not being distracted? Ha 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 ha. Broly said in a very sarcastic and cynical way while laughing at the carelessness of his martial arts master and sparring partner. M. We had said no strange powers. I swear that sometimes you are more childish and vindictive than Beerus. But what made you distracted for a second? It is unusual for you to lose your concentration. And don't tell me that you faked to hit me in the head. I know it's not like that, Wiss said trying to regain the composure of Venerable Angel. Ha 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 ha, luckily or unfortunately you know me too well. It's nothing important, just, something interesting just happened in my second residence not far from here. Don't worry, let's continue with the training. I still have to hit you a little more, said Broly with a big smile while trying to catch Wiss by surprise to hit him once more. Plum. And Wiss, who could hardly stop that treacherous blow said, you are incorrigible. Universe 7. Year. Year 761, October 21st. In a quiet and green interior meadows. Bomb. A spherical object fell from the sky, creating a large crater on the ground, when suddenly. Clash. From that spherical object came a humanoid being with very long hair, a combat armor that barely covered all the vital points and a strange hairy belt, who flew out of the crater slowly as he watched with contempt the creature before him. He was a humble and scared human farmer who trembled in fear with his shotgun in his hand when he saw what was happening in front of him. Well the information was right, the inhabitants of this planet are still alive. Raditz said with disgust upon C that his brother had not fulfilled what he believed was his mission. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.